Height is one of the most obvious physical trait that varies widely across the globe. For centuries, certain countries have been known for their tall populations, like the Dutch or the Balkan nations. But today, these rankings are shifting in fascinating ways. Today, the average Dutch man stands at about 183 centimeters tall, that's a little over six feet. The U.S. was one the tallest nation in the West. Now, American men don't even crack the top 35. Meanwhile, countries like South Korea and Estonia are skyrocketing up the charts, while others are shrinking. What causes these changes? And why do some countries have taller men on average than others? Let's start with the facts. Who are the tallest men today? Based on the NCD RISC Global Health Study, which analyzed data from 200 plus countries, here's the breakdown of the tallest men today. Notice something interesting? Nine of the top 10 are in Europe, and not just any part of Europe. The Netherlands lead the pack with an average male height of about 183 centimeters, or just over six feet. This is exceptional, considering the global average is around 170 centimeters. But the Dutch aren't the only tall people. The Balkans, countries like Montenegro, Serbia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, and Croatia, have averages close to or even surpassing the Dutch. For example, Montenegrin men average around 183 centimeters to 184 centimeters, slightly taller than the Dutch in some surveys. Northern European countries like Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Iceland also rank high with men averaging between 180 and 182 centimeters. In contrast, many Asian countries such as Japan, South Korea, and China have averages closer to 170 centimeters or below, though these numbers are increasing. South Korean men grew nine centimeters taller in just 50 years. African averages vary widely, with some groups like the Nilotic tribes in Sudan and Kenya being exceptionally tall often exceeding 180 centimeters, while other regions average lower due to different environmental factors. These differences are the results of a complex interplay between genetics, environment, and lifestyle. And that's what we'll unpack next. Height is what scientists call a polygenic trait, meaning it is influenced by multiple genes, not just one. Height is highly heritable. Studies in nature genetics show 60 to 80% of height is heritable but genes need the right environment to express fully. Populations in Northern Europe, for example, carry gene variants that promote taller stature. The Dinaric Alps gene cluster in Bosnia Montenegro favors tall stature, but even they needed better nutrition to unlock their potential and reach today's heights. Nutrition plays a massive role. Human growth depends heavily on the availability of sufficient calories and the right nutrients, particularly protein, vitamins, and minerals like calcium, vitamin D, zinc, and iron all directly influence bone growth and development. Countries with improved nutrition and healthcare see dramatic increases in average height over just a few generations. Conversely, malnutrition or undernutrition can lead to stunted growth. The Dutch didn't just get lucky, they engineered their height surge. Here's how. Milk Revolution. Netherlands consumes 1,200 pounds of milk per person per year, one of the highest in the world. Calcium, plus IGF-1 in dairy, fuels growth plates. Protein quality, countries like Denmark eat twice as much fish as the global average, rich in vitamin D for bone growth. Childhood nutrition, post-World War II, Europe prioritized school milk programs. Healthcare and socioeconomic factors further influence height. Taller nations have lower childhood disease. Fewer infections means energy goes to growth, not fighting illness. Wealth equality, kids eat similarly well across classes. Prenatal care, taller moms have taller babies. Scandinavians free maternal health care ensures higher birth weights. Wealthier countries tend to have taller populations because of better access to foods, health care, overall living conditions, and less childhood stress. Poverty and inequality within countries cause significant height disparities. And the next factor which we can't overlook is natural selection. Mate preference styles and social norms can influence height over generations. Taller men are perceived as more attractive or dominant, which can affect reproductive success. Think about it, over the past centuries, women didn't have much of a choice on the mate they would end up with. But natural selection is back. 
Does that affect your choices? He's still short. I wouldn't because I would think I don't want short little kids. <laughs> Brittany. How are you? My name is Sean. Sorry, I'm going to have to next you. You're just not tall enough. Meaning women can now choose stronger genes to reproduce with. And this is one of the factors saving modern degeneration. But even with ideal genetics and nutrition, human height is limited by biological factors. There's a natural range each population can reach. So why are height rankings changing? Let's start with a case study. The U.S. decline. In 1890, American men were third tallest globally. Today, three reasons. Diet collapse. Do I even have to explain this? Just look at the modern American diets. It's f***ing insane. 50% of US calories are now from ultra-processed foods versus 20% in Netherlands. Plus, the foods they eat lack essential micronutrients required for proper development. This follows with healthcare gaps. If you're eating like that, you'll definitely need some health care. 31 million Americans lack health insurance. Childhood chronic illness stunts growth and immigration effects. Latino or Asian immigrants are shorter on average, but two gen kids match U.S. height if nutrition improves. Tall gene variants can spread or be diluted depending on population movement. Nutrition improvements. In 1950, South Koreans were among the shortest in Asia. Today, 171 centimeters, a nine centimeters jump in 70 years. The drivers, economic boom, more meat and dairy. Their beef consumption is five times higher since 1980. And universal healthcare cutting childhood diseases. South Korea and Japan have seen some of the fastest height gains ever recorded, linked primarily to better nutrition and healthcare access. Another factor contributing to the ranking changes is socioeconomic inequality. Increasing wealth gaps within countries are creating uneven height distributions. While affluent groups might continue to grow taller, disadvantaged populations may stagnate or even decline in average height. Environmental pollutants. Exposure to endocrine-disrupting chemicals from pollution and industrial compounds can affect hormone system critical to growth, potentially slowing height gains in some populations. The quality of life, like reduced stress, can also impact growth hormones. Let's look at another case study, the Dutch and the Balkans. The Dutch weren't always the tallest people. Their height skyrocketed starting in the late 1800s. Experts credit this to a unique diet high in dairy milk, cheese, and butter, which are rich in calcium and protein, fueling strong bone development. Along with other improvements in healthcare and a growing economy, the Dutch experienced a growth spurt unmatched worldwide. However, Recent research suggests the Dutch growth increase is slowing. This could be because they have nearly reached their genetic potential or because rising social inequalities are affecting childhood nutrition. Dietary changes like the rise of fast food and potentially less nutritious diets should be considered. Now, the Balkans, Montenegro, Serbia, and Bosnia are catching up and even surpassing Dutch averages in some cases. These countries combine genetic predispositions with great diets and historically physically active lifestyles. Their example shows that height rankings are dynamic, influenced by both biology and culture. In Africa, as I said, height varies widely. Some groups like the Nilotic people of Sudan and Kenya are among the tallest globally, averaging over 180 centimeters. But many other African countries have lower averages or averages are decreasing reflecting differences in diet disease burden, malnutrition, and socioeconomics. This highlights how sensitive human growth is to environmental stability. Every region tells a story about human adaptation to environment, culture, and history. Height will continue to reflect the complex interactions of genetics, nutrition, healthcare, environment, and social factors. Studying height trends isn't just about numbers, it's about understanding human health, history, and biology in a changing world. With natural selection and investing in childhood nutrition and health, the next generation literally grows taller. Neglect those? The data doesn't lie. Make informed choices about your health. Try improving what you can and make peace with what you can't. This is the natural way.